Thank you for purchasing a Norris Seal product. This video is a part of a series that highlights maintenance and repair of the Norris Seal 200 and 285 butterfly valve. This video covers disassembling and reassembling 2 inch through 12 inch 200 psi butterfly valves. Let me start out with a bit of safety information. It's not safe to make any valve repairs while the valve is under pressure. Don't loosen the cap screws or attempt to remove the top works, operator, or bottom plate until all the pressure has been eliminated and the valve has been removed from the line. After you have removed all the pressure from the line, you should close the valve and remove the flange bolts and cap screws. Spread the flanges so the valve can be removed without damaging the face of the elastomer seat. To disassemble the 2 inch to 12 inch valve, you first open the disc enough to clear the raised seating surface and remove the top works, gear operator or other actuator, then remove the cap screws and bottom plates. Now remove both the shaft retention screws and washers and pull the top and bottom shafts from the body. The o-ring shaft seal and thrust washers will come out with the top shaft. The bottom o-ring shaft seal will come out with the bottom shaft. Next, push the disc from the seat carefully so you don't damage the sealing edge. Now, tap the seat from the body with a plastic or rubber mallet. The o-ring flange seals will come free as the seat is removed. The seat o-rings will be in the counter bore of the seat. If you have an M-series valve, you'll need to take a few more steps. Inspect the disc o-ring for damage or compression set. If you need to replace it, carefully cut the o-ring and remove it from the disc edge groove. Don't pry the o-ring loose with sharp tools, which could damage the disc or groove. We have detailed instructions for this in our new operations and maintenance manual on our website at www.northseal.com. When you're ready to reassemble your 2 inch to 12 inch valve, you'll first want to clean all the parts and then lubricate the outside diameter and raised sealing surface of the seat, all o-rings and disc edge with a silicone based lubricant. Remember, the valve must not be put under pressure until the top works, operator, and bottom plate have been installed. First, place the shaft's o-rings in the seat counter bores. Then slip the seat into the body so the shaft holes are accurately lined up in the seat with the shaft bores in the body. A soft plastic or rubber mallet may be used to tap the seat into place if necessary. Go ahead and lubricate the bearing surface of the bottom shaft and the full length of the operator shaft with a general purpose lubricant. Then insert the operator shaft and the bottom shaft to check alignment. Carefully rotate the shaft past the seat and seat o-rings to prevent damage to these sealing surfaces. Do not force the shaft past the seat o-ring and seat. If you need to, realign the seat with the shaft bores. Then withdraw the shafts enough to allow clearance for the disc. Next, you will insert the disc perpendicular to the shaft holes and raised sealing surfaces. Then rotate it 90 degrees to align the disc bosses with the shaft bores. Engage the bottom shaft with the bottom disc boss and insert the shaft o-ring in the counter bore of the body and attach the bottom plate with two cap screws. Align the flats of the operator shaft with a milled slot in the disc boss and insert it as far as it will go. Do not hammer the shaft into place though. Now, install the retention washer and the shaft retention screw in the valve. Rotate the top shaft to be sure the retention screw doesn't interfere with the shaft movement. Check to be sure the disc seats on a raised ceiling surface. If it doesn't, rotate the disc 180 degrees. You won't hurt it. You can rotate the disc 360 degrees without damaging the valve. Insert the o-ring flange seal in the groove between the body and seat. You should avoid stretching the o-ring by first pressing it into place at four positions, then pressing it into place alternately at points in between until the entire o-ring is smooth and evenly secured. Insert the shaft o-ring stainless steel washer and Teflon washer in the counter bore of the mounting pad and install the top works or operator. Again, check to be sure the disc seats on the raised ceiling surfaces. Now, install the valve between the flanges. Remember, the valve must not be put under pressure until the top works or operator is installed. For more information, download our new series 200 and 285 operations and maintenance manual at www.norisseal.com.